Hello everyone, Stephanie Davis here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be sharing this card that I made a while back using the W plus 9 Modern Anemone stamp set as well as a Kind Soul stamp set. I'm going to be using the dies as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp out these leaves with using my Versamark ink pad and it's clear so you can't see where you're stamping so I just try to give myself enough room and I'm going to be embossing these in gold because you guys know I love a lot of gold and on this first um, leaves that I was stamping I did not use my powder tool and on I found on watercolor paper it really does make a difference on Bristol it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference but on watercolor paper it really does make a big difference so the next time I go ahead and stamp out some of these little accent flowers and I just make sure and use my powder tool makes it much easier I didn't have to go around with my paintbrush to get all the strays as much so I'm going to ink all these out and emboss all of them in gold and I'm not going to bore you stamping all the flowers but I did stamp out quite a few as I had never played with these watercolors before and I wanted to give myself lots of room to play and I really had no idea how they turn out so I'm using my heat gun to go ahead and heat emboss all these leaves and flower accents so I go on stamping and heat embossing all those until I have lots of images to watercolor so I have my images placed on my board taped down to watercolor and these are the Daniel Smith watercolors I'm going to use. I'm showing you the dot chart which is essentially 238 dots of color which you can actually sample and I absolutely love them because you can try all of the colors before you buy them and I think it's a fantastic way to try it and it's not very much to get this dot sheet by itself but what I did is order it with a set of watercolors which are all essential colors and it was absolutely perfect for me. So I'll have that link down below in case you want to check that out. But I had also ordered two colors which I figured were going to be my favorite colors and that's Permanent Violet and Amsonite Genuine. Now I'm taking a plastic watercolor palette and I've taken a drop of water in each section so I can use water because that's the key to watercolors is to have lots of water and I'm using some of this Hansa Yellow Deep to color the inside of my flower and I this is the first time, very first time I've ever used my Daniel Smith watercolors so I had no idea how much the watercolors would dry back or how much the colors would fade so I'm really just playing so I'm adding water to each of those petals first uh, just with a damp brush and I'm going to be using what's called a wet on wet technique which is essentially when you take wet paper and you add the watercolors to it so it really gives a pretty effect because the paper will kind of bloom out the watercolors will kind of bloom out in the paper and it gives a very light uh, look to it and then you can go back and add more color where you'd like but I thought I would start there and see how the paint performed so I've had a lot of you ask me which watercolors I like best because I've as if you've been with me a while you know I just started watercoloring playing with watercolors the end of June I really haven't been using them all that much because I've just had a really busy summer with the kids and my mom just came to visit for a week and everything. But uh, I still absolutely love all the watercolors, but I have to say, um, like the Schminkes are really phenomenal paints. I think they're like too scary for me though. Um, but just because you can get the dot sheet and try all the colors before you get them, I will, go, I will just be investing more in Daniel Smith. I absolutely love them. I thought they... I couldn't ask for anything better really and just the fact you can get that sheet and sample all the colors before you try more is fantastic so if I have to recommend a brand that you won't be sorry you get I would say the Daniel Smith watercolors so I'm just going through and adding color and I'm trying different techniques to see which you know how I'm gonna like how it looks and I kind of just think like Copic markers I try to put some um, dark spots and some highlights and I love that you can just take a damp brush and go back and erase any of your mistakes or blend out any harsh lines and that kind of thing. Uh, the only thing I'll do different next time is I will work one flower at a time. I kind of had too much fun and was too excited and kept going on to each flower. I could still go back and fix it but I think the appearance would have looked better if I just would have stuck with one flower at a time. But I like to kind of put some color down and let it dry 
so that when I go back and add the second layer, it's a little bit dry so it doesn't spread out, so it doesn't uh, disperse the paint anywhere. So I go around and much like I do Copics, I just want to have lots of highlights and lowlights and I want to have some shadows behind each petal and I just keep going back and uh, using a damp brush whenever I'd like to remove some color and then try not to put any, I try to make sure and always have some water added to the paint. And even though it's so tempting because this is fresh paint and from what I've heard, Painting with fresh paint can be a little bit different than once you've actually let it dry. So I'll be curious to try that next time. I haven't tried them yet when they've dried. So now I'm taking some of the permanent violet and I'm going around the very inside. I'm trying to get a lot of deep shadows on the inside of the petals where the shadows would be the, high, the most concentrated, I believe. So I'm just adding some texture and basically just playing. So I'm adding a little bit of water and each time off my palette to go back and blend those out each time if once I add a little texture I go back and blend some of it out um, because I wanted some shadows and some texture without having any harsh lines. So but I tried going around the very inside and since I had heat embossed that it made it much easier to stay in the lines and it was really kind of a goof proof way to watercolor. So I highly recommend that for if you're going to be new to watercolors to play with the images that have been heat embossed. It makes it so much easier because then you're actually just playing with the colors instead of worrying about staying in the lines and um, where your paint's going to go. Or maybe it just takes away some of the intimidation because you think it's that you have to be some fancy artist to use watercolors. You really don't. I, if I can do this truly, anybody can. Um, as I said, I just started playing with watercolors for the very first time the end of June, and I really haven't played that many times. I think this might be my, maybe my sixth time. You guys have seen every time I've watercolored because I've showed you the cards, and most of the time I've showed you a tutorial. So if that makes it easier for you and helps you, I hope so. So again, I'm just going around on the inside of the petal now and trying to add some dark shadows on the very inside. I do wind up going at the end of the card and adding black and that works out looking the best. And it's something about when you add three more colors to images, I think it really makes them pop because I don't think any flowers are actually just ever purple. I think there's always hints of other colors. And so I did play on some of the other colors. I started using some aqua and in the leaves I played even more, but I kind of was playing it safe here and just use the permanent violets primarily for these flowers. So I'm taking a little bit more and just adding more shadows. I really can't help myself, uh, but much like Copics, I really like to at the end add more detail and I use, I'm using a number six brush. I'll have it li linked down below. So now I'm going to start coloring the little tiny flowers and accents. And so I did the same thing with those flowers. I used the permanent violet, but then I did take, I'm going to take some yellow here to um, color those little accents. I don't know what those flowers are called, but they're absolutely beautiful. And I actually took the light and then I go in with some little tiny dots. Now I'm using some Viridian green. I'm going to start coloring the leaves. And I was really thinking I would make these, the leaves and stems all kind of an aqua color. But then I decided to make them kind of three colors, an aqua, a green, and a light green. So um, I was really just having fun. But if you'll notice on the bottom of these flowers, I did add some of the Amsonite Genuine, and I think it looked really pretty because I just think, I don't know, something about flowers that have more than just one color, and same with the leaves, I just think they look so much prettier when they have more than just one color. So I start by taking some, I believe this is Viridian Green, that I've uh, painted in the center of these leaves. And then now I'm using a little bit of the Viridian Green with the Hansa L Yellow Light um, to make a my own green color, which is what I love about watercolors is you're only limited by your imagination and that's why none of your, your cards can look different than everyone else's, even if you use the same colors. Um, 
So I'm going around and I'm kind of um, sloppily coloring these because I know I'm going to go back and remove some color and add some dots and add some texture and just have fun. So I'm using a combination of all three colors. I'm using the Amsonite Genuine and I'm also using the green that I made with the Viridian Green and the Hansa Yellow Light. And then I go in at the end and I even use just the yellow by itself. So I use kind of a combination of four different colors to get the look that I was going for. But uh, what I love is I can just go back and use, rinse out my paintbrush. I have my water cups um, in the very front, but I didn't need, think they needed to be in frame. I think I've explained this several times, so I don't want to bore you guys. But anytime you are water coloring, you could just simply dip your paintbrush in the water and then wipe it off on a towel. That gives you just a damp brush and you can go back and fix any of your mistakes. You can remove some of the color. You can blend things out. It's just um, such a simple thing, but it's really magic. So I'm going along and fixing, fixing a lot of my errors where I had been sloppy and went out of the lines. And the embossing really holds it in. Um, but you can go back and erase it with a damp brush if you get outside the line. And I was completely counting on that. <laughs> but some of it I didn't quite, you can see one of the leaves I still wasn't quite out of, um, I still was a little bit out. I should have cleaned that up a little better. So now I'm adding the yellow and then now I'm going to go in and add some green to these leaves and stems um, because I, they were pretty aqua. So... I really liked how all of those turned out and I had so much fun playing with them. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut all these images now and run them through my die cutting machine. And it cut them out perfectly. And then now I'm going to do the little accents and little flowers. And this was all just painted on Canson watercolor paper. Now I'm going to take some Canson watercolor paper for my card panel as well. And I'm going to be using the Kind Soul stamp set to stamp out my sentiment. So I'm inking it up with VersaFine Pigment Ink, which is my go-to for all my sentiments, really. It just gives such a clean, crisp image. And of course, I couldn't do a card without using some of my Fine Tech pearlescent watercolors, which have been one of my favorites for this year. So I'm using some of the pearl gold to add some flicks. And I just use a piece of acetate that's a scrap piece. And that, I love using this to cover my splatters because I can see exactly where the sentiment is and get splatters everywhere else. I'm also splattering some deep black and a little bit of pearl silver. And I just keep turning it around and covering my sentiment with my acetate till I get the look I like. And I'm going to pop up some of these flowers onto foam tape. And then I'm going to have, I have some Tombow Mono adhesive glue there on the side so I can dip all of my leaves and arrange them how I like. So I'm sorry this, I don't know why my camera went out of focus now, but uh, it comes back into focus in almost when I'm done arranging this, so I apologize for that. But I think it's something to do with that white background. I love the background for, I went and bought a couple of these, um, what are they, marble slabs just at Lowe's for my desk. And I love the look of it, but my, I don't think my camera likes that to help it focus. So I'm going to have to use that black mat. So I'm just, I keep um, putting these in where I think I want them, and I kind of give them a test run before I add adhesive. And on a few of them, I go ahead and cut the ends off of the stems, and then I'll go ahead and add some adhesive and use these tweezers. They're really handy to get it exactly where you want it. And I can't make a card without these tweezers, actually. So here I continue to place these wherever I like and add some adhesive. And that's what I really do like about this adhesive is it gives you plenty of wiggle room if you change your mind like I often do. Um, you can easily move it without it tearing. And then it dries uh, permanent after a while. But it gives you just a little bit of um, extra time to change your mind. So I'm going to get these all placed how I like them, and I'm really particular. I really don't know why, but um, I finally get this the way I like, and for this one, I have to cut off the bottom because the phone tape is in the way. 
So I'll get these all placed and I actually changed my mind on one of those later and wind up fixing it. But now I decided that after looking at it, it still looks like it's missing something. And so I'm going to add some more black splatters. This black, they, it did dry back just a little bit and so it turned out a little lighter than I'd wanted. So um, I often find whenever I look at a card and it's missing something, I find black is usually the answer and so I don't know if it's a grounding color or what it is but that's why I usually tend to stamp my sentiments in black because um, it keeps the card from looking too matchy matchy if that makes sense um, or maybe I'm just weird I don't know but I think it makes it look a lot better so I did I did take a piece of scrap paper because I didn't have a second piece of acetate handy there um, to cover up my sentiment I didn't want to get any splatters on the flowers or sentiment of course so I wipe up the few splatters that got on my work surface really quick and then I'm gonna I still feel like something's missing so I decided I need more black so I'm gonna take some black and put it on the very inside of those flower petals and I really do think this made all the difference maybe just because I used one flat color in painting those flowers but I think it added a lot of depth, uh, depth and dimension and um, really gave the fin finished look I was looking for. So I wind up taking my paintbrush and dipping it in water again and wiping it on the towel so I can get the exact color that I would like. I don't want it to be too stark. I don't want it to look like I you know, drew a circle around it or anything. So I just use my paintbrush that's very damp. Uh, it doesn't have any water. I wiped all the water off on the towel but I can go through and soften it to make it look nice. And then now I'm happy with the card, so I'm going to go ahead and just place that petal over just a teeny bit. I don't really know why I, what was wrong with it, but I did have to adjust that. So now I'm applying some ATG adhesive, and this is watercolor paper, so it actually needs quite a bit of adhesive, I find to keep it down and that's going to finish the card today so i thank you very much for watching and i hope you enjoyed this video have a great day thanks bye bye